Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are going to be attempting a couple different things. I'm going to be painting these eyes here in watercolors and I'm going to be using this tiny little primary palette that I made. A couple of the pans were sent to me when I purchased a palette and the other one was just some spare blue that I had laying around. I will go ahead and mention what all of those brands and colors were in the description below if you want to see specifically what I was using. An exciting thing is that I'm actually planning to make a sticker set out of these, so I'm going to be uploading them to my Redbubble store, so by the time this video is up they will be there, and you can get all of these stickers together in a set on my Redbubble store. But my goal here was to use only primary colors to paint these eyes. And as you can see, the eyes at the top, the top two are a bit more rendered in the pencil sketch, and then the lower three eyes are a bit less rendered, a bit sketchier, and the reason for that is kind of the opposite of what would normally make sense. The top two I didn't use a reference, I just thought this is what an eye looks like from a couple different angles, and I drew it. And the ones on the bottom I actually did use a reference, but I was thinking more in terms of rendering the details with my colors, with my paint, and I wasn't focusing as much on getting all of those details out in the initial sketching phase, and I was really interested to see how that would affect the process that I used and how I put the colors together. So for this first one, I went in and mixed like a base skin tone first and laid that down and then started laying in some um, yellow colors for like a bit of shine or light and a purple for shadows and a red sort of color for the blushy areas. And one thing you're going to see overall, I don't know if it was the brush I was using that holds a lot of water or if it was the paper itself where my layers kept kind of pulling up, but I had a lot of trouble building up contrast with these eyes for whatever reason. It just took me so, so long to build up vibrant colors and these are these all of these paints are a different brand than what I've been using lately but it was it was still just a really weird experience like I had so much trouble getting my darks to be very dark and the parts that I wanted to be more vibrant getting them there it just took a really long time and part of me thinks that it has to do with the brush that I was using it's this calligraphy brush and I've used it a lot before for sure but um it does hold quite a bit of water I don't know, I'm blaming the paper because this paper has given me a hard time before, but it's handy because it's in a sketchbook and it's watercolor paper and it doesn't buckle a ton, so it was easy to use, but ultimately I fought with this paper more than I felt like I was actually succeeding in painting these. So the first one I used a skin tone base, and the second one I was kind of just going in with the primaries and mixing the colors on the paper itself, and that was pretty effective. Again, this paper has sort of a weird texture, so it was kind of filmy and I don't know. Anyway, so the third eye, starting with the third, fourth, and fifth eyes was think where things started to get a little bit weird. And like I said, I was using a reference for these and it kind of threw me off a bit because I was intentionally from the beginning going for something with a lot more texture. I wanted to be able to see a lot more of the strokes that I was making and the overall motion of the sketch I wanted to be much more apparent. And what ended up happening in the first layer, I got really, really worried at this point that everything was just getting super muddy. And once it was dried, I tried to go in and add some more layers add some more texture, add some more contrast, and get my values back to a place that made some sort of sense. And this was kind of the beginning of that long, painful process of feeling like I just couldn't get my layers dark enough and I couldn't build up enough contrast and I was starting to overwork it and my layers underneath were lifting and it was drying and looking really strange and overall it was slowly becoming less and less of an enjoyable experience the more I worked on the single eye. And I knew I was getting to a point where I kind of liked it. I didn't think it was completely ruined, but I needed to move on. And technically I was moving on to these other eyes 
and none of them were really done yet even the first ones the values were all super super light um but i couldn't spend too much time on one in particular i needed the whole page to kind of come together as a whole and that overall seemed to work a lot better for me just kind of taking my time moving around the page and working on different areas at different times and then coming back to things one thing that I've talked about before that I don't always like to do, but I did in the case of this, sometimes when I feel like if my values aren't quite right and I don't have the contrast that I need, I usually end up going in with like my black brush pen, which I really love the texture of the lines you can get with a brush pen, and then adding some black lines to kind of define the shapes and things like that. And when my goal is to create a painting, I feel like a brush pen is cheating sometimes, but Ultimately, I was happy with it and it kind of gave all the eyes a cohesive look and kind of helped them all to look like they went together, kind of. Here is my kind of long-winded way of going around and around in circles to get the colors that I wanted. So there was a lot of mixing involved here and lots of going back and forth and adding a little bit more blue, but then it was too much blue and I needed more red. and. While I didn't necessarily feel restricted in using only the primary colors, I didn't really feel like I was lacking a particular color. It did feel less convenient having to go in and mix colors over and over and over again and mixing a bunch of different colors when I could have used a brown or a different shade of blue and gotten to where I wanted to get to faster. So it definitely makes me appreciate some of the things that I do use, but ultimately it was a fantastic exercise because you always hear people say you can do whatever you want with just the primaries, but I had never really taken the time to put that into practice and make it happen. And I feel like overall, even though my values were a little weird because of this paper, I'm really happy and I feel like it was pretty successful. Look at this madness as I lay in these initial layers of gouache to kind of try to bring back my values and as soon as I lay it down it just dries and then it's gone like it was never even there and it's like the super super light layers of gouache and this is why gouache and I don't always get along very well because the color shifts so much between when it's wet and when it's dry and I still haven't quite gotten a handle on that. I'd like to say that I will invest a ton more time working with gouache to get to where I want to, but I just don't know if that's true. I love watching other people do gouache paintings and it always inspires me and makes me want to work with it more, but it just doesn't cooperate with me. And I know that's, I can't blame a gouache. That's just, I haven't learned how to use it more effectively yet, but that's all right. I did use that gouache to kind of go in with some of these and add some more texture, change my values a bit. And overall, I was really happy that I did that. And I'm feel like it was really helpful to kind of get things back on track a little bit. Between that and the brush pen, I feel like the overall effect of these was nice. One thing that I kind of grasped at, and I felt it most in this last eye, but I need to spend more time working to perfect it or to really master it and make it happen more than once, is when you have those transparent layers of watercolor on top of each other, and you can see the layers underneath and, and there's a lot of variation in texture and value. It's such a beautiful thing and something that's really unique to watercolors, that luminescence when you can see through the paint because of the transparency, that's just an amazing, beautiful thing. And I really like to work harder at getting those things to work together. Here you can see in this little palette, I was just kind of working with all of my primaries in this pool of kind of mixing but not completely mixing color and that was a really fun way to kind of keep my color palettes consistent if i didn't do too much to mix those paints and mix those colors i had my my three primary colors there and they were kind of making their own little color wheel mixing in different places and kind of working together but i didn't have to constantly empty and and clean out my little palette and then go again. So that was fun. It's fun when you're working on a small project like this when you don't have a ton of different colors and you can kind of let the colors work on their own to blend with each other and, and that's fun. I know I rambled a lot in this video just kind of talking about these eyes and not really much else, but I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the painting of these. 
So thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to me talk and to watch this video. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I will see you guys next week for a thing, another thing, an exciting thing. I made a thing and I filled it with things and we're going to talk about it next week and it'll be a thing. Okay, have a great week guys. <laughs> Bye.